Howdy everyone, welcome to the Watch Box Review today. I'm glad you guys are here with me. And once again, we're out in the field, we're doing this the right way. Kicking up dirt, kicking up some dust and some mud. It's kind of rainy and drizzly today. And I'm gonna walk you guys through a detailed review of this. This is my Fossil Generation 4 Explorist. Okay, so I bought this watch in December 2018, part of the Amazon holiday season discounts, and it was only $169, and I think I got a really good deal, really good price on it. Prices for this watch um, typically go up to about $250 in that price range during the non-holiday season. So at $169, I jumped on it, and I'm overall, I'm pretty happy with my purchase but there are some quirks and some things along the way. So um, I'm gonna jump right to the cons of this watch. Normally I kinda go through technical specs, pros, cons, and I touch base on that later. There is so much uh, new unboxing reviews and commercialized free review samples on YouTube for this product that I think um, somebody has to go out there and say, hey, what are the cons? What are the negatives, okay? It is now March uh, 10th. 2019 and since December 2018 I've gotten four Google Wear OS updates for this watch and that has been my biggest kind of semi complaint point about owning this. Um, of those four updates, uh, three of those interrupted and terminated basic functionality of my watch at least for a little bit. Okay, so the first update I got in like January 2019 and I simply pulled the watch up off the nightstand charger and the watch face was basically blank and dead. Okay, so that's what it normally looks like. Okay, when it's, when it's illuminated. Okay, but this particular morning the watch screen was blank and I couldn't simply revise it or tap it to wake it up like I normally do. Okay, in this case, the only thing that would revive it was a hard boot and a hard restart of the watch, where I was greeted with a Wear OS, Wear OS update. Okay, that took about 30 minutes or so to update itself and install itself on the watch, but the biggest problem with that is I simply had no choice. I had to install that update right then and right there. I couldn't pause it or delay it until a later time to my liking. Okay, so that's not that big of a deal if you have time in your morning to do that. Okay, luckily it was a Monday morning and I had a slow morning on my way to work. And so that's basically what I ended up doing for that morning. Um, the second update um, was like in February, early February or mid-February time frame. And it actually interrupted with Bluetooth notifications from Android messages. Okay, so all other Bluetooth notifications worked just fine, but for some crazy reason, Bluetooth notification stopped for text messaging. Okay, and a similar update like a month after that um, completely wiped out Bluetooth notifications altogether for Google Mail, um, Android messages, and incoming voice calls. Okay, so these are the kinds of things that have me hesitant towards recommending a product like this. Um, I don't know if these kinds of things are just a bug with Fossil or Google Wear OS. I simply have no way to tell. All I know is I look down at my watch and it's no longer doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I have to, okay, kind of go into the application on the phone, re-download, reinstall, and then everything works a-okay. My biggest complaint point is um, Google updates that are waiting to install really shouldn't interfere with basic functionality of the watch, really. I mean, they should just kind of park themselves on standby and then alert the user and then let the user choose whether or not to install or when to download and when to install, okay? So that's kind of been my biggest pain point with the watch itself. Um, yeah, battery life is pretty short, basically a day and a half, maybe two days. Um, is typical for me given how I use the watch, but that's kind of a minor point. The biggest pain point I have is these unsuspected surprising updates from Google and how they kind of just haphazardly manage to download themselves into my watch and interfere with the function of the device. Okay, so those are the cons and that's really it. Okay, so those of you who are familiar with Android um, as an operating system, 
uh, maintaining the OS and those kinds of updates, it's kind of the similar experience with Google Wear OS. Okay, now that being said, once the updates do install, they've been spot on, reliable, the watch is great, I get notifications, everything works the way it's supposed to. Okay, so that leads us into now the heart and the meat and the potatoes of our review here today. So let's hammer through the technical specs and walk you guys through all of that. I got my crib note sheet here on the side. You're seeing the watch here on my 63 millimeter wide wrist. I have very wide flat bony wrist structure and I find this watch very, very comfortable. It's a fairly large watch, okay? Like most smart watches, um, they need to be somewhat large for screen real estate and battery capacity as well too. Okay, so I think it has a 400 milliamp hour capacity battery. And again, that usually translates over into about a day and a half to two days of usage for me. Okay, so uh, let's hammer you through the, the physical dimensions of the watch. And the case diameter is 45 millimeters across. Okay, not including the pushers or the crown. Okay, the lug end to lug end length here is 51 millimeters. Okay, the case thickness from the flat of the crystal to the case back is 11.2 millimeters. The crown protrudes out from the case by 3.5 millimeters and the diameter of the crown itself is 6.3 millimeters. Okay, so the crown is a really nice push button type of crown with a rotating scroll wheel. Okay, you can simply scroll up and down through app lists and various lists and things of that sort. Okay, and the AMOLED display, the actual uh, functioning LED display or AMOLED display is 36 millimeters across. Okay, so it doesn't fully span across the entire width of the face. There is a small black bezel going around the perimeter of the watch face. Okay, so let's take you guys off the tripod and mount you guys up on the headband. So there's my watch screen that I've got set up. I'm going to swipe to the right, I'm going to activate the Google Fit app, just like that. Okay, and there's my step count. You can see my step count history, basically. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to take a heart rate reading. Um, that's pretty straightforward. I simply tap this to get a heart rate reading. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a workout routine just like that. So this watch does have built-in GPS tracking, okay? And I'm gonna start a hike, I'm gonna start workout, and it's gonna count, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so my clock is starting, so I have no miles, no mile per hour, um, no heart points or heart rate or anything. There's my heart rate, 85. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that. There's my base heart rate, okay? Alrighty, so from here what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the field and we're going to take a hike and I'm going to hike you guys through the use of this fossil Gen 4 Explorist as a workout um, heart rate sensor. It's pretty rainy, pretty wet out, and who knows, might get wet, might get sprinkled on a bit, and we are entering into Wild Horse Valley. And we are on the clock and ready to go. All right. Creeks are flowing this morning. It's actually not morning, it's this afternoon. It's afternoon right now. Oh yeah. So right away, I hope you're seeing one of the limitations of an AMOLED screen display, and that is screen brightness. So you guys have been following my channel, know that I have also been using an Amazfit Stratos, and it has a transflective, transreflective screen display, which is much, much better at displaying details in bright light conditions. Even though it's not even that bright and that sunny out right now, still, it's bright and it's sunny enough. So that's one of the strengths of the um, Fossil Gen 4 Explorist. One of the strengths is just how bright and how vibrant the, the screen display really is. Now it's hard to tell in these outdoor conditions and still I think this is one of the brighter, more vibrant OLED displays on a smartwatch. Even though it's a little hard, even though it's a little hard to tell right now. Okay? So, still smiles, all smiles. We're heading that way. 
I'm averaging about 3.12 miles per hour and I've only gone about 0.42 miles so far. So one thing that's missing right away from the fossil Gen 4 Explorist is the um, altimeter gauge that I have on my Amazfit Stratos. So I think one way to think of this review is um, taking a smartwatch, a full featured smartwatch, and using it as a trail tracker. First of many stair climbs. So this is pretty much an uphill climb all the way to the summit at 1750 feet. All right, averaging about 3.6, 3.14 miles per hour. We've gone about 0.65 miles, that's about right. And we're gonna take this up to Costa Nolan Trail to Los Trencos Trail. 0.87 miles, and we're rocking. So one thing right now I'm noticing is I don't get any sort of a heart rate warning or a VO2 max warning from the fossil Gen 4 Explorist. So one thing I'm noticing right away is the watch tends to slide and slip around and up and down my wrist as I wear it and as I hike. So one thing I need to do, I need to do is keep pushing the watch. I've pushed it up on my wrist towards my arm a little bit more and I should get better heart rate readings at that time. Okay? So we'll keep going. Definitely continuing uphill. More switchbacks. So we're finally coming up and out of Wild Horse Valley and about 1.65 miles. Stopping to take a rest here a bit. Been taking my rain shell on and off, on and off. And I can hear rain, but I can't tell exactly where it's coming from. So it's coming down on me a little bit now for sure, as I head up into the teeth of these rain clouds. So I'm also having to put you guys away periodically. Although my camera is light splash proof resistance, still I'm trying to avoid getting it wet if I can. With the touch to wake screen enabled, the perspiration and the sweat inside my rain shell was registering screen touches on the watch. Um, so what I had to do is turn off the touch to wake feature on the watch and now I have to manually press a push button like that. Okay, minor problem but no big deal. All right everybody, I apologize for the wind. It's really windy up here on the gear review hilltop, but we made it. And it's raining pretty good up here, and I don't know if I want to have you guys out and my camera out in the rain too much here, so. But I want to show you guys the Fossil Gen 4 Explorist, and it's covered with rain, 2.59 miles, not much. We're at 1750 feet elevation right now, and I was hoping these blue skies would come up here and greet me, but now I've got a rain cloud right overhead, so I'm getting dumped on pretty good. Um, at least a little bit here, so anyhow um, So yeah, this has been a pretty good experience with the fossil gen 4 explorist and um, I think I'm gonna just I'm gonna use this 2.59 mile trek and This is going to be kind of our This is kind of gonna be like our end point. Um, it was an uphill trek at this point and Let me go to my workout and I'm not even sure if I can register screen, oopsie, screen touches. Okay, there you go. Let me pause the workout, stop the workout, and it's doing its thing. Hope you guys can see that with the glare off my uh, screen. Active time, one hour, two minutes. And heart points, 88 points, 550 calories, distance 2.59 miles and 4,500 steps, that's really, that's really not that much. <laughs> so there's my heart rate graph, and average 122 beats per minute. And actually, I'm, the fact that I'm maintaining touch sensitivity with the water on the display screen, that's actually pretty good. Oh, battery life. So I started off this hike with 
81% battery left. And just that one hour trek with GPS, I'm down to 47. I'm now down to 47, 46% battery. Okay, so that was barely an hour hike with GPS on. Okay, so um, that speaks to um, one of the complaints I have with the watch, again, being battery life. Um, a lot of people complain about the battery life for, the, for this watch. Um, no different from me. Um, it is a serious limitation for this watch. Um, so, for example, like my Amazfit Stratos would do this hike and maybe consume maybe 7%, maybe maybe 10% of the battery during this hike um, with, with GPS fully activated. So there is one of the main deficiencies with Wear OS devices in general. I mean, the minute you turn on the GPS, bam, you're taking a, a battery life uh, hit. So it is what it is. Um, I think because of that, really can't recommend this watch as like a multi-day backpacking GPS tracker. Um, I think if you want to do something like that application, you're better off looking at Garmin, um, wrist wearables, or just a dedicated Garmin GPS unit. Um, or even, as I said earlier, even um, even the Amazfit Stratos that I have. Um, it could serve in a multi-day backpacking scenario. Um, being that it can, keep going with basic GPS functionality, you know, more than like what we've seen, what we've seen here today. So here's a screen in like direct sunlight. Okay. So it's not the brightest screen, but it's barely legible and you're seeing it there and all of its greasy, gunky, funky glory with raindrops and water drops and everything. So can I recommend this watch? That's a tough call. Um, Man, I think I can, I can recommend this watch. I can recommend this watch under basically two scenarios. Number one, you're familiar with Android OS and you're willing to kind of go through the technical um, proficiency to maintain an operating system uh, with updates and things like that. That's the first caveat. Second caveat, you only need like one day of battery with GPS. Okay, anytime you need a second day or you need to push into two days with GPS and or smart functions, forget it. I think you're better off looking into, like I said, Garmin or Fitbit or even the Amazfit Stratos that I showed you, which um, has a pretty solid, a pretty good four or five day battery life by comparison. Okay, no complaints about the wrist strap. The wrist strap is awesome. Okay, no physical complaints about the hardware, the switches, the buttons. The rotating crown screen, uh, scrolling screen is really, really nice, but mainly it's the battery, okay, and the OS, okay? So, man, now that the sun is out, I really want to stay up here. This is nice. Yeah. I have to hike back down there. I really don't want to go, I really don't want to go back down there. In all, in all honesty, I kind of want to stay up here. So thanks a lot for sitting through this review guys. Please feel free to post comments and questions down below and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Anyways, I will catch you guys later. Anybody, everybody stay safe out there and enjoy the outdoors. I will catch you guys later.